We're heading up to Joe's Salmon Lodge, which is located in the central coast of British Columbia, right near Hakai Pass. And Joe's Salmon Lodge is a really special place to fish. It's everything about it has this really fishy feel to it, and it's hard to describe. Fishing with old school cut plug herring, knowing that the chance is there to catch a big, big salmon is, is one of the reasons why you go to Joe's. This trip, we're gonna be fishing with Dave Babich, another good friend of mine who I've known for a long time, a former Canuck. And I know Dave's a passionate angler and really enjoys getting out on the water and, and chasing salmon. So to have him on the boat this trip is gonna be a lot of fun. This trip up to Joe's is a preseason trip right before the lodge opens. With a lot of good friends and family, a lot of these people are longtime customers and they're just great people and passionate fishermen. And, and a lot of these people I've been able to develop a very good friendship with over the years coming up and fishing at Joe's. After arriving and grabbing a bite to eat, we met up with lodge manager slash owner, Doug Stufko, who is known in these areas as a legendary cut plug fisherman to go over a game plan. So, um, what are we gonna do? What's the, what's the plan of attack? Well, we gotta let this blow over. It doesn't bother the fish. No. Well, it's no the, bad weather, right? Don't we, we have told, to gear up? Told bad, it's just bad clothing, mm. right? We got, uh, we got some good spring fishing out here. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I've been out there the last couple of days, and, and uh, it's pretty good. Awesome. Yeah, there's not a lot of fish here, but uh, we, we put our, our herring in the water, I guarantee we're gonna have some success. That's exciting. Yeah. Perfect. All we gotta do is get out there. We will not catch any in here, guaranteed. Put it, you can't catch them no. out there if you're hearing something. You're gonna water. catch nothing until we get out there. All right, we'll fuel up and that sounds like a good game plan. Let's get your coffee. Coffee? <laughs> I, I got coffee. <laughs> We wanted to get out and catch the tail end of the tide change. The wind was blowing pretty hard and the seas were, were building, but we still wanted to head out. So we did, we went to a different area, a little bit closer to the lodge that was protected. And that's one of the beautiful things about Joe Salmon Lodge is no matter what type of weather you're faced with, there's always somewhere that you can tuck away and get out on the water and fish. So we are cut plugging here and all the guys have different styles of how they like to hook their fish up. But the main thing is, is you gotta clean all the innards out first so there's nothing dragging so that fish can roll nice. Doug and I do it a little bit differently. I like to just run the first hook through. Just pop the second one in. And just run the second hook under the dorsal. Pull her through and then Back out the other side. Just kind of back out the other side under the, under the skin and back in. So for me, it's you got a hook kind of at the tail. A lot of times these fish like to eat it from, from the tail side. So we've got that hook there and got the second hook up here for insurance. Going a nice slow roll there, imitating a wounded bait fish. Oh, and that looks just perfect. Ling dinger. Oh no, the quill back Massive. or something. Not a linger. Lingy. See you later, bye. He liked that roll. You got a ling roll on there. Don't make fun of my bait. You're making fun of me. That's, that's fine, the fish is the fish. So the first night was a little bit slow for us, but that's okay. We know we have a few days here in front of us and the weather is supposed to be getting a little bit better and clearing up. And we're gonna try again and we'll be out first thing. 
early morning, day two. I'm super excited to get on the water with Doug Stufko and Dave Babbage. The plan for day two is to head out and fish a famous area at Joe Salmon Lodge called The Gap. Now, the Gap is a very, very special place. It's kind of the epitome of the rugged West Coast. It's an area where a huge amount of water funnels into a narrow passage. And a lot of times these fish congregate in this area because the bait gets pushed into this narrow area and it just piles up in there. So the tide change in there can be phenomenal and, and the bite can be just epic because of that. The bait hangs out there and the salmon come in to feed on the bait. Dave, what do you got there, bud? There we go, there we go. Got a double header here, folks. Double header, oh, he keeps letting go of it. That's a nice one, Babs. You gotta reel them slow when they got their mouth on it. You off? Oh, the ling cod, they're, they're, they're hiding in, in rocks. The kelp comes out, grabs the herring, and then, it, you know, you got to be quick on it, get it up as fast as you can, or else it goes back into its hole. So uh, what Babs is doing now is just letting the line out so it's flat, and then just try and reel real quick and try and get it out of there. Uh, looks like we got ourselves a small ling. That's a nice heat size. Nice linger? Yep. Atta boy, Babs. Yes. Nicely yeah. done. Nice dinner. Little fish and chips, bud. Here we go. Whole herring, barbless hooks. Look at that. I managed to gaff the herring with the link cod. That's hard to do, eh? Yeah, it is. That's how you do it, Dad. I uh, geez, I actually called that one, huh? Come on, Uncle Jack. You Give did us call one. that. Nicely done. Should I clear a rod or two, or? Uh, yeah, this is. Uh, you think? Kind of staying down and kind of going in. A Doing bit. what it's supposed to do? Yeah. Well, I'll clear this side. Sunshine. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't even think he knows he's hooked yet. Nice. Always trying to get into the kelp, huh? Oh, yeah, we got a good one. Yeah? Yeah. Look at that. Look at him dancing back there. Shallow rod. Doesn't even know he's hooked, I don't think. Huh? Came out of the water there like right, a coho. I saw him there. Nice. Very ah. comfortable. Shaking his head. Nice. Head shaker. Head shaker. That's what they do. We'll get him out of this kelp here. Oh, yeah. There we go. Woo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> Woo! Yeah, baby. Oh, good. We're just coming up to the tide change, too. Oh, it's just head shaking. Come on now. And have a look at this oh, guy. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful fish. you want to say hello? God, this rod it starts to bend right at my hand. It's great action for these uh, springs. Yeah, it's just Shimano uh, convergence. It's a nice. He's a he's a teener, hey, like yeah, uh, mid he... mid to high teens. In the net. Nice job, Mo. Nice fish, buddy. He's still got a lot of fight in him. Kicking salt water into my mouth there. But look at it. What a strong fish for that size fish. He's probably about 15 pounds, That's eh? Amazing. You know what? This time of the year, early season, you know, you're getting the uh, feeder springs. You know, they run 15 to 25, but man, I tell you what, they fight like they're 45. They're hot. Like amazing. Hot, hot fish. Let's get in the boat. Let's get another one. Well, that's a beautiful fish right there, hey? Yeah. Off the back, shallow rod. I tell you what, you know, we're, we're fishing four ounce weight, uh, cut plug herring, 10 pulls, right off the kelp bed, right here, where that boat is right there. Dana Merson fishing right there, 10 pulls. The thing just hit like a freight train. Yeah. Fought like a coho, but went down like a spring. And here we are. The great, great fight. Beautiful fish. Strong so, fish, healthy so fish. So firm. Just chrome, a chrome bullet. Okay. Yeah. How deep are you? It's oh, right under the boat. Front. Hold on. Oh, yeah. There's back here. Back there. Maybe a coho. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Decent sized coho. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There he goes. Nice runs out of this guy. So these cohos in here get so big come August, September, hey? Yeah, you know what? They say that at summer months they gain a pound a week. Jeez Louise. <clears throat> what we got here, the guy? Six pounder? Yeah, about that. Good looking fish. Yeah, it's pretty. Oh. Ooh. 
Hello. We shall give back to the sea. Yes. Nice clean there release for the gaff. There you go. No touch release, bud. Nice job. Let's do it again. Let's do that. That was fun. Chris and the new reel. First salmon of the year. Really? Of 2019. Very nice. Yeah. We were having a great time fishing at the Gap and, and catching some nice springs, you know, some teenagers, and it was a lot of fun. But Doug kind of had a, a fishy intuition that we should make a move and go over to 60 Pounder Bay, which, you know, a lot of times as an angler, you don't leave fish to go and find fish, but I trust Doug and he basically grew up on these waters. His feeling was because this was the first trip of the season, if we make the move, we might be the first rod in at 60 Pounder Bay all year. So he knew that nobody else had been in there yet. And he felt if that was the case, that we would have a chance of getting into some big fish. Oh yeah, line coming up. That's a huge salmon, man. That's a big salmon, the babs. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. I think so. <laughs> he did look brown, though, yeah, didn't he? I know. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's hold on. Hasn't up. He's gonna start smoking line here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, what? What is that? No, no that's that. It's pumping blood. It's pumping blood. It's, oh, he buried the hooks, Babs. That's oh, a that's a, that's a tie, dude. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It's yeah. probably not going to be a super long fight, Babs, because he's he's bleeding out. Yeah. Just oh, he's just head shaking down there, man. Yeah. He is just he's straight down. There he goes. He's a nice fish. Yeah. Nice fish. You might be able to get him right away yeah. here. Yep. Yeah. Nicely done. There he goes. Now he's going. Nice fish. There you go, Dougie. Right on. The boy Babs. It's a beauty, man. It's a beauty fish. That speech. was crazy. We both thought. Is oh. that a lingcod? Oh, yeah. You ready for this, Babs? I oh, are. Pull some slack over. Oh. 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 He swallowed that whole thing. Oh, yeah. It's like a torpedo, eh? Yeah. We probably would release this fish, right? Yeah. But swallow the hooks. I mean, this fish is not going to survive. Yeah. So uh, we have we're gonna, we have to take this fish. He's, he's a dead fish. We could see in the water. We actually thought it was a lingcod at first because of yeah. the blood there. It almost yeah, turned brown, brown in the yeah. water. But look, the hooks are right down his throat. What a beautiful fish, though. <laughs> That's a nice, awesome fish. Fish on, fish on. Right about close to that corner where you got that other one. Hey. Set. Oh, there he is. There Ooh. he is out there. Oh, yeah. What a beautiful day. Look at that broad bend. I like that. Yeah. Nice. I like it a lot. A good oh, yeah. Really good fish. Oh, yeah. Ah, that's the sound you know we want to hear. How you doing, Babs? Good. Good? Oh, look at that thing. Straight down. Woo! Good job, buddy. Good job. It's like strong fish, eh? Yeah. You're gaining on him, but I think he's going to take off again here. Yeah, I would imagine. Just a beautiful day out here. Man. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, what's the is Everything you just took back, you just... Yeah, took her away. That's all right. Whoa, <laughs> he's just screaming. What a battle. What a... What a fight, man. What a fight. That's the old freaking knuckle buster there. Did you get a little? Oh, like yeah. Aggressive. Holy cow. Look at that, that thing. green back. Yeah? There he is. Biggie? Oh, he's a big fish. Oh, oh. Oh. Two feet. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's a hog, dude. <laughs> That's a big fish. Babs, come up here in the sun. Come up here a little bit, walk up, if you can. We get him out here. <laughs> you can see that. <laughs> oh my God, that is epic. Okay, you guys ready? Let her go. Oh. 
Yeah, hold, hold them there for a sec, right, if you can. Good. Nice fish, man. Ready? That's spectacular. Oh, 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 this is going to gonna be go, yeah. super cool. Good. What do you think, big fella? You ready? Oh, there you go. <laughs> that was, Babs, that's oh. amazing, buddy. <laughs> Wow. Oh, I, you know what? I got goosebumps right now. Seriously, I do. Yeah. That's that's spectacular. To see a fish like that, Dougie. Nice job. Awesome. Boys, that that was cool, man. Seriously, great job. Oh, yeah. Spectacular, Dougie. Doesn't get nice better job, than that. buddy. Hey. Gotta love it. Sixty pounder bay. All to ourselves. Oh man. <laughs> Woo. Shaking. I, I seriously have goosebumps. I think swim away like that. Unbelievable. Oh, what a great feeling. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Man, did we have an absolutely phenomenal day at 60 Pounder Bay. I know Doug swears by it, and this place did not disappoint. You know, we got into multiple fish, but big fish in there too. And the highlight was Dave Babbage hooking and releasing a tie that had to be at least mid to high 30s, which was an incredible fish for this time of year. That's a fish that had the genetics to go well over 50 pounds. And for Dave to release that fish back in, watch that Chinook swim away, it kind of gives you chills. Now it's time to head back to the lodge. And we had huge smiles on our face the whole ride in. Can't wait to get back for another awesome meal and look forward to heading out on the water tomorrow. So our last day here at Joe's, one of the things that I wanted to do before we left was to go target some ling cod. And Fishmaster Mike is a great fisherman as well and, and has a couple of phenomenal spots to go fish for ling cod. And I really enjoy ling cod fishing, one, because I really enjoy eating them. And two, the take when you're fishing ling cod is fantastic. Ling cod are very territorial fish. So if you find some nice pinnacles, there's a very good chance you're gonna find the ling cod. We got fish on. He just kind of just sucked it in. That's a little bit more lingy. That's a real good one. I think. Oh yeah. There we go. There's a ling cod there, Mo. There you go, bud. Holy jeez. Jeez oh. <laughs> Louise. We got a proper one on. There you go. This one wants to take us out to sea. Man, they're strong fish, eh? Like They're really strong fish. I like to call them spring cod just because they fight like a spring <laughs> almost, eh? Seriously. With those head shakes. Yeah, absolutely. And I enjoy fishing for them because it's always fun when you have the rod in your hand and you feel the bite, well, you know? Especially on the salmon gear, right? Like, you know, turns a 20 pound link cod into a 20, 20 minute fight. <laughs> he feels like a decent ling. That is a nice fish. Yeah, that's a nice one. Oh yeah. There you go, Mo. There's a nice ling nice fish. What do you say? That's a proper one. That's a good fish. That's a nice ling. Well, I think we're into another fish here. I thought it was snagged. It felt like his head shaking. Oh yeah. It's gonna hit this like right away. But we 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 paid our dues to get out here. Yeah. We were right into it, but uh, you know it's it's we wouldn't have come out here if it wasn't safe to fish. No, of course. But just a little rough to get out here. Moved around to a couple different spots here and it looks like we found a couple fish now. Yeah. But this guy is just hunkered. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping he didn't pull himself down into a rock on you. Right. So that's what they'll do. Oh yeah, there. that's a good head shake right there. Oh yeah. yeah, that's a fish, dude. For 100%, that's a fish. If this fish is like over 30 pounds, which it could be, you know, we'll just let this fish go. Well, exactly. Big female. You know, the, the smaller ones have nice firmer meat to eat anyways, right? Um, and yeah, if he's gonna lay a bunch of eggs for, uh, for the next years, then 100%. Structure is what you're looking for fishing these lings. A lot of times you're looking for uh, peaks, hey Mike, that come up in the water there, rocky yeah, ledges. What I like to do is I like to just open the chart, get in tight to a rock, um, look for nice tight contour lines, which means you got a bunch of drop-offs, a bunch of shelves. 
Yeah, sharp and steep. Sharp and steep, exactly. Just nice, nice jagged pinnacles on the bottom. That's where they like to hide. That's where the feed likes to go. Oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big oh, ling, dude. That's a really oh, big ling. Oh, oh. It's a big ling there. Some like incredible day ling cod fishing here. Yeah. Have a beautiful fish like this that we can enjoy. Good size. Pretty much anything bigger than that, you're gonna you're gonna release back in. And... 100%. Um, that one's still nice and firm. Not a big pot belly on him yet. And where he was hooked, it just made sense to bring him in the boat. Yeah. And bring him yeah. home with yeah. us. So it's good, good eating, man. But. Uh, yeah, appreciate it, awesome, man. That was, man. Yeah. That was a fantastic Great time. morning. Great time. Eh? Jeez. Joe's is truly a special place to come and fish at. And this trip was a lot of fun having Dave Babich on the boat with us and Doug Stuffco. I can't thank Joe's enough for having us up here, especially experiencing the, the early season fishery up here. You know, right before the lodge officially opens, we got a chance to go out and basically test the waters, if you will, and, and get into some spots where people haven't fished yet this year, and, and it really paid off. Our day at 60 Pounder Bay was one of those epic days that, that you'll never forget, and releasing that big, huge fish by Babs and, and watching it swim away puts a huge smile on my face.